Judge Mar Marcy Marie Marie Stephanus. Uh, apart from being an IP teacher, is also um, a judge of the Federal Court in, in, uh, in Rio. And a reminder that several people, people have mentioned over the coffee that some of the best uh, teachers are indeed judges. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's very interesting, by the way, that you combine those two roles. So looking forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you, John. Good morning. First of all, I would like to Michael and WTC for this great opportunity of being here and participating of this colloquium for IP teachers. As you know, I'm from Brazil, and as I told you on the first day, of, besides being an IP teacher, I'm also a federal judge. It's very hard to speak after Justice Beth, the former Judge Randall, <laughs> but I Hope you enjoy my presentation. Brazil and Rio de Janeiro are very well known countries all over the world for many exciting things, stunning landscapes, huge monuments, beautiful beaches, our national passion, carnival, samba, and football. But we are also becoming known for exciting developments in IP jurisprudence, and that's what I'm here to talk with you today. At first, it's a good idea to see the structure of Brazil to, in order to see how our courts operate. Brazil is a very large country. We have 26 states plus a federal district here where our capital, Brasilia, is located. You can see more information here. Understanding Brazil's judicial system is key to the navigation of IP in our country. Our system is quite complicated to understand because we have four instances of jurisdiction. So I created this slide to try to simplify. Here. The most important thing that you have to know is that we have both in first and in second instance, we have federal and state judges and courts <coughs> act separately with two superior tribunals above them. The federal courts oversee cases involving only the federal government and its institutions and the state courts are in charge of all disputes between citizens and or enterprises where there is no federal institution involved. Regarding IP, federal courts are responsible for annulments or validity cases, while our state courts hear most cases of infringement. Since our PTO is located in Rio, the majority of the judicial cases in IP take place at the Federal Justice in Rio de Janeiro. Since 2000, there have been four specialized courts established, with a provision of eight judges to preside over first instance cases. These courts are specialized, sorry, they are specialized in social security and IP cases. For several instance here, there are two specified sections in the Federal Tribunal of the Second Circuit, located in Rio, with six judges that were established in 2005. They are specialized in Social Security, IP, and plus Federal Criminal Cases. Currently, I preside over one of these four courts in first instance, and I'm going to show you interesting things about them. In this table, we can see that in the last 10 years, uh, the amount, the total amount of the cases we have in the four specialized courts is dramatically going down from 22 to 6,000. It happens due to the creation of small claim courts, which has taken the majority of social security cases off of our desks. So now, 
we have much more time to focus on IP cases, which, as you can see here, have grown 400% in the last 10 years, to 3 to almost 14%. Particularly in the court that I preside over, the amount of cases hasn't changed much, but the amount of IP cases has doubled. So, to put it quite simply, we are very busy. <laughs> why, why the increase? Uh, why the increase in cases, do you think? Why? Yeah. Shall ask the lawyer. Does not These specialized courts hear cases involving all kinds of IP rights. There have been a great number of landmark cases, particularly about trademarks and patents, that bear mentioning. And I'm just sharing a few, few of the most interesting ones with you. Maybe you know this guy. This is Cesar Cielo, Brazilian most famous swimmer, gold medalist at the Olympic Games. And this represents a company that manages merchant payment options with credit and debit card machines. The company hired, they contracted the athlete to be the face of the company without providing a special authorization to use his family name as a trademark. And the decision of the court was that the company could not use Cielo's family name without authorization because it is a well-known surname associated with the, with the swimmer and when the company contract him, they wanted to associate his image with the persona of the newly branded business. Apple, who has an iPhone here? I have two. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine calling an iPhone by another name? Or can you imagine buying an iPhone which is not produced by Apple? In Brazil, these things almost happen as another company of electronic devices here, Gradiente iPhone. They register a trademark for Gradiente iPhone years before Apple iPhone. Apple also almost lost the name iPad as well, as it was first used in Brazil for a defibrillator, this one, called iPad Fast. This is what we can call a David and Goliath case. The Principality of Monaco wanted to invalidate a trademark created by a Brazilian citizen called Marcio Monaco, who used his own surname, Monaco, with a little crown over the O. A decision of the court was that Marcio Monaco has the right to maintain his trademark because there is no bad faith and no risk of association or conf confusion to the consumers. I think everybody knows All Star. On the other hand, we had a, a case involving a very well known American company, American All Star, and a Brazilian company who used to be its representative. One day, the Brazilian, had, the Brazilian company had an excellent idea. They decided to produce their own shoes, they registered the trademark as theirs, and rescinded the contract with the American company. In this case, the decision of our courts was to invalidate the Brazilian trademark in order to respect the American one. Now, let's talk a little bit about patents. We also have many 
cases about patents. But especially after three our landmark cases have been the fields of pharmaceuticals and related areas. Before trips, Brazil gave no protection to pharma. Surprisingly, the transition periods provided in trips were not used. And just in 1996, we had a new IP law in accordance to the new agreement, which also brought some trips plus provisions. One of them is the provision of the sole paragraph of Article 40. The caput of Article 40 pro oops, sorry, provides that the validity of a patent will be 20 years from the application date. It's according to TRIPS. And the sole paragraph says that if the examinations take too long, it will be guaranteed a minimum period of validity of 10 years from the granting date. This provision is being questioned directly in our Supreme Court due to its unconstitutionality, but there is no decision at this time. But the overwhelming dispute today <coughs> in Brazil is about what we call the mailbox patent the patents under Article 70.8 TRIPS. The Brazilian law said that the validity of the mailbox patents would be 20 years from the application date, caput of Article 40, in accordance to TRIPS. And the sole paragraph of Article 40 would not be applicable Despite the express provision in our law, our PTO fixes incorrectly the validity of many mailbox patents, providing them a validity of 10 years from the granting date. When they realized the mistake, if there was a real mistake, they decided to file 48 lawsuits being 42 in Rio de Janeiro, in order to readjust their terms. And April 28 marked the first decision of our tribunal, determining the readjustment of the patent terms, remarking the prevalence of the public interest involved. This decision then of the Court of Appeals confirmed my decision in first instance. To finish my presentation, I would like to share with you two recent examples of how our work in IP courts is effective and how it contributes to the enforcement of a balanced system. Until recently, we in Brazil did not have a test of obviousness to prove inventive steps. I'm very proud to say that we now have this test and I was given the honor and the responsibility of creating it just last week. It's called TNC test or an English creative motivation test. And another development I'm very proud of is the fact that due to our decisions about the mailbox patents, 53 important drugs will be in public domain earlier that was covered in both print and online media in Brazil last month. Among them, there are patents for medicines that treat diseases like cancer, AIDS, H1N1, transplant aid, rheumatoid arthritis, and you welcome guys, Cialis for adaptive dysfunction. With that decision, with those decisions, the production of generic versions can begin with the consequent lowering of prices and enabling consumption by the less wealthy part of the population. As you see, we are, we are working in very, very exciting cases in our courts. And in conclusion, I may say that IP jurisprudence in Brazil is working very hard to fix our legislation.
legislative problems and remove obstacles that prevent people from obtaining important access to medicines. I thank you very much again for hearing me and I thank again the organizer for the opportunity of being here and sharing this impression with you all. And I believe that we together, we can use all the knowledge that we are trading, that we're sh sharing here now in order to promote enforcement of intellectual property in our countries without losing sight, which I think, I think it's the most important thing, without losing sight of important questions such as public health and access to medicines that are especially crucial for our countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcia. That was a fascinating uh, presentation. Uh, I am extremely curious about the creative motivation mm -hmm. test because I think I the inventive step uh, is one of the areas in which the, the courts play such an important role. Uh, so perhaps uh, we'll find some time to discuss that uh, uh, later. But of course, as is now traditional, we're a little bit behind uh, time. So as tempting as it might be, oh, good. As tempting as it might be, we'd better uh, pass to the, uh, the next two presentations.